boys and girls, I am Auntie Sandra. Let me welcome you all to this our online version of Sunday School. I want to encourage all of you to continue to be safe. Remember to wash your hands as often as possible and wear your mask when in public. As you are officially on your holiday break, I trust that you have been enjoying yourselves. But at the same time, I hope you have, been, you have started preparation for back to school. Today we are celebrating the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, proper 16. I now invite everyone to say together in whose name we worship. Please read what is on the screen. We make the sign of the cross as we read. We worship in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together the Apostles' Creed. The words are on the screen. We will now have a reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 8 to chapter 2, verse 10. Our reader today will be Xavier Myers from St. Barnabas Crawford, St. Elizabeth. Please follow the reading on the screen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 1. 
verse 8 to chapter 2 verse 10. Now a new king arose over Egypt, who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, Look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come let us deal surely with them, or they will increase and in the event of our join our enemies and fight against us, and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Python and Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread, so that the Egyptians came to judge the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites, and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick, and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks that they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shepra, and the other Pua, When you act as midwives to the Hebrew women, and see them on the breast stool, if it is a boy, kill him, but if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile. But you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levi woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get you a nurse on the Hebrew men? To nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he took him as her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now view a short video. Please listen attentively and follow carefully so you can understand the message. After the video presentation, I will share with you some further thoughts on the lesson. It may not have looked like a promising future after Joseph was rejected by his own brothers and sold into slavery. But God had a plan that included mercy and a mighty deliverance. He raised Joseph out of slavery and into a powerful position over all of Egypt and revealed to him things that no one else knew. When famine came, Joseph was prepared and many lives were saved, including the brothers who had once despised him. With open arms, Joseph received his father Jacob, his brothers, and all their families. They lived happily together in Egypt, enjoying the blessings of God's great deliverance. But time passed, and a new pharaoh rose to power who did not know Joseph 
or remember how God had delivered them from famine and certain death. Instead, he felt threatened by the people of Israel, who were now growing in numbers and strength. Out of fear and evil in his heart, this new king forced the people of Israel into slavery and did everything he could to stop them from becoming a mighty people. Yet another pharaoh attempted to destroy the people of Israel by demanding that every son born to the Hebrews be killed. Throw them into the Nile River, he commanded. He would rather murder them than watch them continue to live in the goodness and blessings of God. Little did this king know that he sought to destroy a nation of people God had promised would be great. God was preparing his people for one of the greatest deliverance stories of all time. During the time of Pharaoh's evil order, a Hebrew woman gave birth to a baby boy. She named him Moses. Seeing that he was no ordinary child, and his life was already marked with God's favor and mercy, Moses' mother hid him from Pharaoh's men as long as she could. When she could no longer keep him hidden, she devised a hopeful plan. She built a strong basket and coated it with tar and pitch so that it would float like a tiny little boat. She then placed baby Moses inside, took him down to the Nile River, and hid him in the tall grass along the water's edge. As she watched him drift down the river toward an unknown future, tears filled her eyes. She was sad to let him go, but her hope was in God. Moses' sister Miriam ran along the riverbank, watching the basket as it swiftly drifted downstream. She anxiously looked ahead, hoping for a miracle to save her little brother's life. The basket soon broke away from the bulrushes and plants, and came into view of an Egyptian princess and her maidens who were bathing in the river. When the princess noticed the curious basket floating in the water, she sent one of her maidens to fetch it. What a surprise to see such a beautiful child looking up at her. His cries melted her heart. Immediately she recognized it was a Hebrew baby boy. I will raise him as my own, she said, as she held on to the child protectively. So Moses began a life of privilege and pleasure among the royals in Egypt. But one day he would give it all up to gain a treasure that only God could give. Boys and girls, from this story, we see that even though the Israelites face injustice from Pharaoh, God still enabled them to flourish. They were made to work very hard in all types of field labor, but the more they were oppressed, the more God allowed them to multiply and spread. Children, why was this so? The reason God's presence was with them. The king came up with another scheme in a bid to reduce the strength of the Israelites by killing all the male babies that were born to the Hebrew women. He asked two of his midwives to carry out this plan. They did not follow his instructions because they feared God. Here again we see the presence of the Lord. Children, I want you to know that evil will not always win, and God stands and supports those who do the right thing. In times of great trouble, God raises up simple people to do incredible tasks. Even as children, God can use you to do good things. We are going through uncertain times as we face COVID-19. But as children, you can be obedient and kind, and so lift the spirits 
of those who are around you in your homes. Life became more and more difficult for the Hebrew people as Pharaoh gave new orders that every Hebrew baby that was born must be thrown into the river Nile, but the girls can live. When Moses was born, his mother had to make some difficult decisions. She hid him for three months, after which she put him in a basket and placed him on the river Nile while his sister watched him. God allowed Pharaoh's daughter to find him. She was not a believer, but God can use anyone for his purpose. He used her to fulfill his purpose in the life of Moses. Here again we see the presence of the Lord. Moses' mother hoped that God would save him. She did everything that she could and she trusted God to protect him and God did. Children, another lesson you can learn, your parents and guardians seek to protect and provide for you, but they too have to rely on God to do the rest. Boys and girls, you all are special. I repeat, boys and girls, you all are special. God's presence is always with you, even when you face difficult times. He will use other persons in your life to fulfill his purpose in you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us into the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy O oh Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O oh God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us now say together the calling for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, proper 16. Grant, O oh merciful God, that your church be gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue in prayer. O God, our Father, you have bidden light to shine out of darkness and to have awakened us again to praise your goodness and to seek your grace. Make us children of the light and of the day that our lives be open to your glory. We may shine as a light in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Let us now pray for our children. Father, we bring our children to you for your blessings. Help us to be sensitive to their needs. Give us wisdom in our care of them, that they may grow up rooted in love, steadfast in faith, strong and courageous in life. Guide us and all who have the care of children. May we never hinder, but help and encourage them towards independence and maturity and to a living faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray together the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It is now time for this week's memory verse. Our memory verse is Exodus chapter 1, verse 17. Please read aloud with me. But the midwife fear God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. Remember, the memory verse is our takeaway from the lesson for today. You are to commit it to memory so you can say it when called upon to do so. Our closing hymn today is He has got the whole word. The words are on the screen. Please sing aloud. He's gone.